Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to FX Maniac. This is Sayyid Mahmoud Amiri and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a basic crowd simulation using Typeflow. So this is going to be our result. So it's actually, it's a, a, a super basic tutorial, uh, you know, on using Typeflow actors and creating this uh, crowd simulation. And in the next uh, couple of videos, we're going to be talking about uh, some advanced examples. But for today, I'm going to show you guys how to do this and how to set up like a uh, character animation and then set it as a crowd with Typeflow actors and stuff so it's gonna be very cool uh, and uh, of course for legal reasons I cannot include the project files for this in my patreon but if you want to support me and get some other awesome project files you can definitely go and check out my patreon page and uh, you will not be disappointed and you'll support me as well all right so enough talking let's get into it I'm gonna go into 3d studio max and uh, first, I'm going to show you guys how to set it up with a basic bipad, and then we're going to bring some characters from Mixamo and other stuff. All right, so if you go into these uh, little systems here, I'm going to go and create a bipad and make sure you did, it doesn't matter, but I, I want to go and set it to a male bipad and draw it out in the scene and hit move and make sure it is zero and zero in the scene. Uh, which is basically the center of the scene so you can you can go ahead and set it up and for this uh, running cycle uh, I've got this BIP file if you go into this website animium animium I'll make sure to put this link in the description for you guys so you can I'll, I'll copy this and put it in the description so you can go ahead and download it for free so once you download this file you're gonna go into your motion tab and you're gonna go into load file and this is the run cycle here so I'm gonna go and open this up and hit OK and we've got this running cycle for 48 frames alright so I want to convert this uh, running cycle animation into a tie actor so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into helpers and go down to tie flow and I'll go into tie actor so this is going to be our node that it's going to help us to bring our rigs here and our animation here. All right. So the, the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this three little dots here and hit add and go to select and select all. So it'll basically select all the components of the biped and it'll be there. And the second very important thing you want to do is you want to make sure this actor is centered with your object. And as you remember, this object was in the center of the scene, so we can just center this by right click on X and Y. It'll basically zero out the values, right? So this is our tie actor. Right now, I'm gonna go into my tie flow. So I'm gonna create a tie flow here. And I wanna give uh, birth to some particles. So I'm gonna go to plane, and I'll just go ahead and draw it out here. And in this case, we've actually drawn, we've actually generated the actors in a very uh, unique way because we want to put some distance between them. So what I'm going to do is I want to generate the particles on each of the, the vertices of this object, right? So the more particles you want to have, the more you have to increase the number of vertices on this object. So for now, I'm going to go with 10 by 10 or even 6 by 6. We don't want to go 66 because that'll be a lot heavy. So I'm going to select my tie flow here and go into the editor and just move it on the right side so we can see it both. So I'm going to add a birth operator and I'll hit tab and I'll add a position object. And by the way, if you're new to tie flow, I have a dozen of tie flow basics tutorials. So if you go down here, I have the tie flow for absolute beginners. I have the tie flow cloth basics, spline and all sorts of tie flow tutorials that you can go and check out so I've got plenty of tie flow tutorials okay so I'm gonna go back to 3d studio max and I'm gonna go and pick this object and I wanna go to my birth and make sure that uh, from 0 to 10 frames I wanna give birth to like a hundred or even like 40 particles and I want the positioning to be the vertices in order so now the color is different so I'm gonna set it to white so we can see it so now we can see that we have some particles on the vertices so I just wanna fill it up so I'm gonna increase the number so that we have 
a particle on each of these vertices. And now uh, I'm going to go and add a tie actor, sorry, the actor uh, operator. So I double click, put it down, and I'll delete this, and I'll select my tie actor, and I'm going to hit add selected. So right now we have it, so I'm going to go into display, set it to geometry, and right now we have our actor here. And they're generated in a very unique way, and we've got a lot of distance between them, so they're not sort of uh, colliding or going through each other, right? But they don't have the animation yet, okay? So for that, what I'm going to do is I'll go and select my tie actor, and I will go into the animation, I'll add, and our animation is like 48 frames, right? So what I'm going to do is I'll select my tie actor and I'm going to go and set the, sorry, just move it out here. Select this, set it from 0 to 48 frames. And I'm going to go back to my tie flow and I'll add a, an actor animation operator and I'll drag it here. And whatever the name of this uh, animation sequence is, you want to make sure that it is the same here. And later we're going to be talking about, you know, combining different animations and stuff. So this is really important. So what I'm going to do is I'll set the... So now if I go through, you can see that we have our animation here. And you can see that we've given, like, the particles to generate uh, till 10 frames. And you can see that a lot of particles are being born here. So we can fix that two ways. For now, uh, they're just moving, but as you can see, if I move forward, they're not looping. They stop moving and, until the 48th frame. So you can turn on loop, and they will basically loop. So they're, they're just going to loop that sort of uh, running cycle. So the cool thing about the cycle is it's loopable. So yeah, you can get it from here. I'll put the link in the description. Okay, so now we can add some speed to these particles. So I'll go hit tab and add a, a speed operator. Make sure it is at the bottom of everything. And what I'm going to do is set the direction to Y, I believe. Particle Y is this direction. But we want it to be the, the speed to be negative. So I'll set it to negative 3 for now. But you will see that they're moving very slow, right? So I'll set this to negative 10. So now they're moving, but we've got plenty of particles which we don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'll set this to 0 to 0, and I'll set this to like 30 particles, or even 40. Yeah, 40 is fine, I guess. Just like that. So now we've got our animation here. And you want to play around with the speed to get the value right. So I set, I set it to like negative 10 because I play around I played around with it previously so it looks correct but then if you set it to like minus six you will see that they're moving slow and they're not sort of accurate right so I'm gonna set it to negative 10 and if you want to randomize the movement because all of them are moving like the same way you can go into the actor animation here is the uh, offset so I'm gonna set the offset to like six frames and the variation to three frames. So now they're they're moving a little differently, like five frames difference. But I think this is our basic simulation. Okay, so uh, I'll just go ahead and play this. You can see that our actors are moving, and it's looking pretty cool, just like that. So this is essentially the basic setup for a running, uh, you know, crowd simulation. But if you want to sort of, you know, uh, bring your own objects and create something like this, then we need to bring our own characters, right? So it can be your own character that you rigged or any other character from any 3D uh, software. Or you can go to this website called Mixamo and I've already selected this character. So if you go to the Characters tab, um, I'll just delete the running. So we've got a lot of different characters, but you want to make sure to pick a character that is like humanoid, so you don't want to pick this character because the rig is a little different. So I just picked this racer and then I went to animations and I searched for running and then there is this running one, right? So I'll click on this but you'll see that it's just moving, right? Till 19 frames. But we have this cool option, it's called in place because we want it to sort of loop the animation in its place and then we can move it with the 
speed operator, right? Because we just wanted to sort of loop in its own center of the object. So once you go, once you're okay with this, you can go ahead and download this with skin FBX. Download it, and once you download it, you can bring it inside 3D Studio Max, and we'll we'll do the rest here. So I've got this running FBX here. I'm just gonna copy this. Uh, destination I'll go to file import and merge and make sure we set it to all files and here is the FBX that we can bring hit OK and we've got ourselves the model okay so it's here so yeah I'm just gonna select this and make sure it is 0 to 0 and you can see it's fairly big so it's okay we can scale it later and right now all you need to do is just select your Tie actor and we'll go ahead remove all and I'm gonna go to add I'll just select I'll just delete my biped here so I'll select the biped here we'll delete it and then you can go and select your tie actor go to add and we'll select all except for the plane and for the mesh itself, which is okay, even if you don't select it. So we'll select the mesh as well. We'll select here. And then we got all these particles, right? So they're fairly big. What I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna go to the animation, and you can see that um, in the mixer mode that it is 19 frames, so I'm gonna go set the animation to 19 frames, and I'll go into my tie flow and add a scale operator. And you do wanna Put the scale before everything otherwise it'll just mess up everything so I'm just gonna set this to like 30 so now we got our particles now we can turn off display because the actor is actually generating the skinned meshes so that's what's giving the mesh so you don't need the display operator so right now if I play this you will see that our characters are in fact running in that same fashion and all we need to do now is uh, we have to fix this weird shading issue and the textures. So the texture is very simple. You can hit M here. And what I'm going to do is I'll take this color picker and this is our material here. I'm just going to directly sort of apply this to my tie flow here. So I'll select my tie flow and I'll just apply it here. And we've got this material. And the other thing we can do is fix these issues. So I'll go back to the first frame. I'll select my main character. So I'll go into the editable poly. I'm going to select the element. I'll select his hat, his helmet, sorry. I'll just uh, select this. And hold on shift and select all of these here. And you want to go down here to the smoothing groups. Clear all. I'm going to set it to auto smooth. And I'm going to hit Control i to reverse the selection and select the body, do the same, clear all, auto smooth. And I'll just go back to my skin modifier. And now you'll see that our tie actors are also sort of smooth and stuff, so we've fixed that problem. And all you need to do right now is just increase the number of particles or the size of your object to get a lot more of these characters. And you can, you can create something like this very easily. So this was a preview from the tutorial that I've done previously. So yeah, this is how we create it. And these are some basic tips to create your very simple crowd simulation. So you can go and pick up like different characters inside of Mixamo. So I'll just delete the running. So a lot of characters are there. You just want to make sure to pick up a humanoid character and this running animation. All right. So in the next videos, we're going to be talking a bit more advanced, uh, you know, crowd simulations. But in the meantime, this was the today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it. And if you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I really need you guys' support. So, you know, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to get some cool project files and support me in the process, you can go ahead and check out my Patreon page. It would really mean a lot to me. And I do want to thank my Patreons that are already subscribed to my channel and, uh, you know, helps to support the channel. So, yeah, this is the today's video, or rather this was the today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Till the next one, enjoy working.